season four! Thanks for waiting! You know I'm worth it. Ooh, that was creepy. We're talking about the tale of the Princess Kaguya. Because it's amazing, it happens to be Ghibli, and this isn't Ghibli month, but I'm gonna do it anyway! Ah, we're back! <laughs> talking about the tale of the Princess Kaguya. Pretty much the brand new one from Studio Ghibli. You can count The Wind Rises, and as soon as I get my hands on it, I'm going to review that. But right now we're talking about Princess Kaguya. Mostly because it's amazing, it was nominated for an Oscar, which it should have won. Because don't get me wrong, folks. Baymax and Toothless, they're my dogs. I'm not hip. But, after watching The Princess Kaguya, no. I'm sorry. This thing is like so superior on so many levels that the fact that it didn't win just goes to show, I'm gonna say it, how stupid the American movie going audience is. That's right, I said it. Screw you, Academy. Screw you. It looks like it's animated in pencil and watercolor, like it was old school. It's obviously a computer program simulating these, but the fact that they went that way is such a risk. Such a big risk, because let's be honest, when you think Ghibli, this isn't the image that comes to your head. You're thinking, you know, Totoro, Nausicaa. It's such a different style for the Ghibli animators, but it's still the Ghibli animators. You can tell. Every little detail is there. They're doing this minimalistic, kind of sloppy animation, but in that, it's actually quite detailed and very beautiful, because they're masters of their craft. And this is not Miyazaki. This is one of the other founders. And wow. I was impressed. I was very impressed. The Tale of the Princess Kaguya is actually a Japanese folk tale called The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. It's a fairy tale. This happens in feudal Japan. That's right, the before time and the long, long ago. <laughs> Sorry. So the movie starts classic storybook style narration and the art style is not typical Ghibli, which I was kind of put off by at first. Then I started watching it and it was like a storybook come to life and I really enjoyed it. The bamboo cutter finds like a little tiny girl growing out of a bamboo stalk and he takes her home and raises her and she starts growing incredibly fast. They get her as an infant and within, let's say, the course of a spring, she's like 14. Really fast. And it's kind of just about her experience being this weird kid. <laughs> You really do enjoy her as a little baby. That is fantastic animation. And then she gets super ugly face, and you can't help but go, oh, this creepy baby. <laughs> okay, first of all, the little girl coming out of the bamboo stalk, that's weird. But knowing that, why would you immediately go back there and, like, start cutting bamboo? I would have some hesitations. Is there something in here? Am I going to cut into this thing? Is it going to scream? I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> and then, and then, he gets gold out of it. And then he leaves? Fuck that. Why would you leave the giving bamboo grove? I would stay there forever, you fucking idiots. What's the matter with you? Just take her away from the magical bamboo and let somebody else have it? Idiots! <laughs> All the kimonos that come shooting out of the bamboo. I would have thought the bamboo was doing a magic trick. <laughs> but no, seriously, you keep the best and you sell them. And then her dad, he decides to raise her as the princess he thinks she is. So, you know, he takes her out of the city and starts making her go through all these weird Japanese customs. They're not weird, they're just outdated and kind of weird to us. Why would you paint your teeth black? That's weird. You see those nobles? They were falling all over each other. Takes her down, makes her become a noble woman, if you will, waits till she, you know, comes of age, she's probably like 16, throws a big party saying, hey guys, my daughter's legal, she's in the back sitting in a box. That party lasted for three days, good job. Woo! Party! So if you're a prince trying to get a princess that you've never seen to like you, being the suave guy that you are, you compare her to something unattainable, something that most people can't normally get. But make sure you, as a quasi-rich, quasi-powerful person, can still get the item. 
It's got, I would say, a melancholy end. If I had to wrap up the, the moral. The, the main moral of the story is be happy with what you have because you may not have it forever. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I will tell you right now why it didn't win an Oscar. Because it is about a half an hour too long for your average American moviegoer who happens to be a parent who wants to get this kid home under two hours. It's like two hours and 19 minutes. Yeah, that is a little long for an American movie-going parent who wants to entertain a kid. Another reason why it didn't win, because they went traditional animation, not CG. Did you notice the winner was CG? Oh yeah, I did notice that. It's like they're taking points away from him because he didn't make it look prettier. That was hard what he did, all right? That was hard and beautiful. It's literally moving art. It isn't a happy ending, but most real fairy tales aren't. So let's just get that out there. And the final reason it didn't win was because of the breasts. That's right, American audiences can't handle that in a cartoon. They just can't. They can't handle nipples. That's right. Even when they're being used properly. There is, there is this one really weird transition in the movie. It's weird. And it's like 30 seconds of what's going on. It's not really 30 seconds, but that's how it feels. You're like, is this still happening? Overall, I thought this was a very nice experience. It is a little long, but only if you're not enjoying yourself. If you're enjoying yourself, this thing is a cakewalk. And it's told very well. I like the music. I love the animation. The voice acting was pretty good. There was a couple rocky moments in the, in the voice acting, but overall, very good voice acting. Excellent storytelling. My official rating and my unofficial rating system, totally unworthy. This is Andy View by Dave. I, of course, am Dave. If you have any questions, comments, confusions, suggestions, put them below and I will get back to you. See you next time. What would you do if you found a little girl in a bamboo stalk? <laughs> Slash, what would you do if you found a bamboo stalk full of gold? Would you move away? I wouldn't. I think she was receiving these to help her have a nice life here. Not necessarily the life her dad chose. The, the, the formal, all that formal bullshit. No, they could have lived a very happy life at the bottom of the mountain in a decent sized house and she would have been fine with that and she would have been happy and she wouldn't have freaked out and called the moon people. I w if I had to liken it to something, I'd say it's a little more like Cinderella. Only like reverse. If Cinderella was Sailor Wan, Sailor Wan, Wan, she's a moon knight. Easiest birth ever. We just boop, done. Do not show your baby crazy wives this. There's a ton of side characters, including the weird little cat servant. I don't get her. I don't get why she looks like that. She's the only one who looks like that, and it's kind of weird. But whatever. She serves her purpose. Lady Sagami is, is kind of a bitch. She's kind of a bitch. They really get into the customs, and the customs look painful. There's Stay Maru, who's her childhood friend, who she runs into after she becomes a princess, you know, and they have, they have a thing. They have a thing. He's totally going to leave his wife and kid just right now. Let's go! <laughs> Seriously. A dang stay motto.